Jeremy Swift plays Leslie Higgins in the Apple Emmy Award winning comedy, Ted Lasso. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. I want to kick things off, Jeremy, by asking you, what has been the most important thing about Leslie for these three seasons? Oh, well, that happened in season one, probably, where he was, he resigned and then um, Rebecca apologised and he was reinstated in a stronger position and um, he could be himself more. And um, and that was, of course, all due to the domino effect of Ted and his positivity and humanity. So um, it just shows, you know, the trickle down effect that people can have. Um, so I think that changed him up hugely and from then on he was comfortable in his own skin and able to you know do things like bring on um a sports psychologist and a therapist rather and um bring in zava for good or bad certainly for laughs good yeah. um uh and do some good stuff for the team so yeah i think that's when it really happened mm. for him yeah, season one was like a turbulent season for <laughs> for, for 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 Leslie. You could definitely yeah. say, yeah. Um, which has given like him some comfortability, like getting that out of the way in season yeah. one to really be himself and be, as you say, be comfortable in, in his own skin. Uh, yeah, Jeremy, like how important is that for like an actor to be comfortable in their own skin and in well or in their character's skin? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to be, you know, whatever the way the skin stretches, you've got to go with it. Um, I mean, I, he hasn't had an awful lot of dilemmas, but then he's an older, more stable character. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going with. And, um, yeah, he's a bit of a rock, um, an unlikely rock. You know, it's not that he's just there like an oracle. He's like um, an unintentional sort of guru um that stuff just spills out and he says the right thing when it's the right time yeah how how much are you like leslie jeremy am i like him yeah are you like are you what, what how are you similar to him how are you different from him um <clears throat> i'm quite an amenable person i suppose i'm probably um more um <laughs> uh outwardly grumpy and um than he would be um i don't you know i don't like people who are rude or um impatient or you know that kind of thing and i let them know <laughs> i think i don't know whether leslie would necessarily do that he might just step back and probably be cleverer than i am actually um but yeah i suppose there are some things that i bring to it i make some strange noises um, I don't have acid reflux, thank goodness. And I do play the double bass, which is very convenient, I have to say. Oh, well, let's <laughs> talk about that episode. Now, I definitely wanted to touch on that at some point in this chat. The episode where the team goes to Amsterdam, where uh, Leslie goes to the jazz club and you get to play the double bass. So you were really playing the double bass in that scene? I was, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. How like so you you play the how is playing the double bass in that scene different to how you would normally play the double bass? Because for a TV show and for a scene and like there's cameras and there's like I'm assuming different takes that need to happen and things. Oh well technically. Um <laughs> I, re I recorded it with the band in a studio about yes. three weeks before we did it, because otherwise we might go at different, you know, for different takes, we'd be at different yes. tempos, yada, yada, yada. But um, no, I am, um, but as far as um, sensibility goes, that's what I wanted to learn the bass for was, was its anchor in improvised jazz. Uh, and um, I, I realized I'd been missing the puzzle listening to you you know lead you know players and trumpet players and sax players and pianists who were incredibly uh, you know did, did amazing flourishes and missing out the fact that there's somebody in the background keying it all the harmony together 
and once it took me about half a century to realize that <laughs> um, but once I realized that I was fascinated by it and that's why I learned to 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 play jazz bass so that's what I've been I've been having lessons for quite a few years interesting yeah. the sort of did you say beat in the background keeping the harmony together like it's kind of it does you yeah. know because it, it's a very um uh and changing changing all the time you can't you know you know, most jazz bass players aren't just doing the ding, boom, 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 the same thing. They're going all yeah. over the place. Yeah, and um, that's that's that. You know, on a on an instrument of um, you could say tonal limitations, um, it's it's rhythmic and um, uh, you know possibilities are amazing. You know, yeah. so yeah. How like apt is that for Leslie? Like you know, like oh, yes, yeah. Like yeah. is that the like, glue? Is it, yeah, is there a parallel there that you see? Because yeah. it's in some ways that scene you're sort of like, oh, we're seeing such a different side of Leslie. This sort of secret life as a jazz fan, double bass player. Uh, yeah. But the way you were describing the double bass, I'm like, oh, that sounds quite like Leslie. Just the yeah. beat that's keeping harmony. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, wow, you nailed it there, Matt. Yeah, I hadn't thought it through like that, but yeah, there's the um, there's the big metaphor for his character. <laughs> there you go. Um, what what like was it like filming that scene though? Because we do like it is seeing Leslie in a very different context than we usually do, and it's not just the fun we get to see him play jazz, but also like we do get to see him play that sort of mentor role with uh, Will the Kit Man as well. So how did that scene, like how how did you find approaching that scene? Oh, well, I loved it. You know, I am a parent and um, and I, I, I love Charlie's work in the show. Uh, and, you know, it's a great dynamic to have because, you know, he, as you say, he, he is a mentor to, to, on occasion to different people. And um, the great thing about the show is that there are so many actors and so many characters in it. You can pair any of them off and you'll have a different chemistry. So um, uh, that was, it was really enjoyable finding that dynamic between them, you know, not knowing each other greatly. And of course, Will is, you know, a, a quite deferential and, you know, um, although he's he's got his own little pearls of wisdom for a young guy. Um, but no, I, I love um, I love Charlie's ticks. Um, he uh, he could be almost a long lost son. He lo looks a bit like me when I was about that age, and he makes some of the same un uncertain sounds. So um, it was great fun. Yeah, uh, we were in that uh, on that set. It wasn't a real club. Uh, it was a it was a fan fantastic um, design um, by a production designer Paul. And um, you were on that for a long, long day. Um, um, and it was great fun. Mm. Yeah. D d d like, um, what, what, um, what have you learned and how have you grown through this role, Jeremy? Well, I think you can't help, and I hope it sticks around, you know, for the rest of my life, really, to have... Um, just a little bit more patience and calm down a bit, not to be too snarky. You know, these are very basic things to look beyond what say an intimidating or aggressive person is about, not to be involved in that toxicity. That's my personal takeaway and I, you know, at one point in your life, do you necessarily learn to not get involved in that? There's lots of people my age who will get very cross, very angry, very quickly about not really very much at all. And it's a waste of energy, you know. And um, I think that's what the show does. That's what Ted Lasso, the character, does. He dances around, in particular, male toxicity and... Um, with humor and everybody comes out winning uh so 
that's the attraction for the show for I think for a lot of people. Um, but if I can keep that vibe going, um, I would be very grateful. And I've never taken anything away from a show really like that before ever. I, and that's the thing about the show that it has this rippling effect that it's sort of beyond its own responsibility for it's become a thing and it's sort of set off a chain it's very different from any experience i've had yeah and I, I love the way the show sort of has that idea that you don't meet the sort of anger that comes from toxic masculinity with more anger you've got to meet it with something else like you've got to meet it with something else if you want to see change and things like that. So that's really cool. Um, what we've talked about, we've touched on this a little bit, but what do you think Higgins brings to that show and the dynamic? Because there are, as you said, so many different characters. What is what is sort of Leslie's lane? I suppose you can see um, that there is maybe light at the end of the tunnel. You know, as what how people on social media put it these days couples goals um you know that they because you know <laughs> i'd say, say a lot of these people should are old enough to know a bit better <laughs> people in their 30s and 40s having all sorts of boyfriend and you know you know marital romantic uh, ups and downs um and he has that stability um you wouldn't have um particularly um got that from the first season but as we talked about it's it's changed up and it's it's nice that he is respected because i've got to say this in a lot of sitcoms i'm 62 a lot of male characters over the age of 60 are ridiculed or are out and out idiots in in comedies and often very funny if you think of parks and recreation or brooklyn 99 you know the older characters are that's what happens to the older male characters but so it's i think it's very cool that higgins is is um is a kind of generally respected character mm. and like he still has the opportunities from time to time to be a bit silly too which is nice like he's respected and silly. what for you has been one of, what was what do you think like higgins is what was no for you the funniest moment to play what in all three seasons yeah let's go all three so if, if you want to think of the most recent season that's fine but i'll, I'll give you free range whatever you want jerry <laughs> oh my goodness well uh you know the the i love doing the um the crazy um cake dance right at right the beginning of season one i loved climbing through the window um in season two and the office running gags I could have had a couple more of those, really. Um, I loved those. And um, I came up with one where I said, couldn't I be wearing something that is the exact same color as the wall behind me? You know, or something. And you just not, you just see it in a tracking shot, something like that. Um, and I, you know, the, the tea spillage, that was um, fun uh, in this recent season. Yeah, I, I love doing the... Um, the deaf, the, the stupid physical comedy things, yeah. And something fun about Leslie too is that he is part of the Diamond Dogs, which is yeah. great. How long did it take you to get your howl down? So everyone's got their slightly different howl for the Diamond <laughs> Dogs. Um, it didn't take very long. I'm all, you know, I'm an actor. I'm always doing stupid sounds. Um. Uh, I'll never play King Lear. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't think I don't think it took too long, to be honest. And I'm still not sure what. Every time it comes to a Diamond Dogs take, and I think, what am I doing this time? What is that? Um, I think I've done sort of almost doggy talk. Sometimes I've done a kind of rob a kind of um, you know. Scooby Doo kind of, um, or oh, what was he called? Snappy Doo? What was the little one called? Uh, Scrappy, maybe? I don't know. Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> I've done it that route. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, basically, Matt, not very long, I don't think. Okay. So, and, and it seems like you just 
like each time you come to it, you just take it as it comes, whatever feels right. You don't have your like method of approaching your diamond dog. <laughs> my method, my yeah, method. Yeah, yeah, no, you you, know, you yeah. just just see how you're feeling in the moment. Yeah, well, I've got to roll with whatever the dynamic of the diamond dogs is. Yeah. I love it. Uh, what about, uh, also something really sweet is that Higgins' wife on the show is played by your wife. That's right, yeah. Yeah, what, what's right. what's that been like um, approaching, like for your real life marriage to be a part of this show in its own way? Um. Well, I'm sort of used to it now, but you know, I mean, I mean Mary's only done you know, maybe one or two eps. In well, of course, the, the Christmas one was quite. That was a few days, so that was that was very enjoyable, um, and you know, a little bit strange because sometimes we'd be in the background just chopping up carrots in that episode or whatever, and it was just like, well, this is like being at home with a few cameras around, and um, certainly more footballers than I've ever had in my own house. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, People are still clocking on that we are married and um, seem to be <laughs> very sweetly delighted by it. You know, it's um, it just brings a few more shekels into the house. That's all I can tell you, Matt. Really, yeah. But it's very, it's very, um, it's very sweet. And it also it saves me. You know, when people we are together and people want a selfie, Mary. You know, Mary doesn't just have to stand on the side. Well you know stupid husband gets a, another selfie done she they, they want us both in the selfies so that's, oh, that's great. so nice and yeah. like, i guess you were saying before how like this role has had an impact on you and the sort of message of this show has had an impact on you like few others have or maybe no other roles you've had have and it's nice that your wife's going to be a part of that journey as well um Absolutely. that role that's really sweet um what what do you think is it touches a little bit what what is the thing the magic of ted lasso do you think if you were to sort of summarize that in a sentence or two? Oh gosh um i think it symbolizes um hope and a way forward it's progressive thinking that people can benefit from and sidebar is very funny too yeah, that's good. I love it. And what's your, do you have a favorite moment on Ted Lasso from the first, from any of the three seasons? Oh. I think when Roy, give a choke up, hugs Jamie in uh, season two, I literally, I, I don't know whether I'd read that in the script or, or, or taken on board what a massive moment it was. But wow. I literally went, I literally shouted. I just went, oh my God. It was like a goal, you know, an emotional goal. It was so, so exciting. And my funniest one in the recent, this, this season is when I had to watch it three times is when uh, Max who played Zava came into the locker room and stood in front of Jason. That was just, it, just killed me and jason moved as if he was on a skateboard he did some real you know body popping stuff there uh <laughs> keeping his dignity and just move it was blinding bit of comedy that that was a great moment i do think like particularly this final season the jamie roy relationship and how that's developing is one of the real like bright, oh. like it's so so great how that's yeah. gone yeah, yeah. um well, Jeremy, all the best of luck with the upcoming Emmy Awards. You were nominated for season one. Maybe the double bass can get you back in the race for season two. <laughs> hopefully. Don't think gonna... Well, we'll no, see. I think... We'll see. <laughs> see well, I think you're in the mix. I think Ted Lasso does very well with acting nominations, so uh, traditionally. So we'll see how you go. But uh, all of us luck for you in the show. Thank you so much for your time today. And people can go to goldderby.com to follow the Emmy race. Thank yeah. you, Matt.